Hey lighting people, today I'm going to explain to you how phaser math works in Grandame 3 version 2.2. I'm going to explain how width, measure, and speed interact and hopefully have you with a better understanding of this math by the time I'm done. I'm going to select a group of fixtures here and now I'm going to create a phaser from scratch by setting the dimmer to 100 in the first step and zero in the second step. As you can see, we now have a phaser. Now this phaser is currently comprised of two steps and each step has a width of 100%. That's the default. So right now our total width for the phaser is 200% and each step is occupying one half of that. If we go over to phaser steps, we can adjust the width of each step individually. This is going to impact how many hundreds it takes up here. So if I adjust the width of step one to 200%, we now have three separate sections laid out here, and the first one is occupying two thirds of it, so two out of 300%, and the second step is occupying one section. When you change the width, it resets the width for just that step, and your total width is then comprised of the total width of all of your steps. Now, no matter what your current width is, the transition value affects the percentage of that step's width. So right now, our current step one width is 200% of the total phaser, but when I change the transition, it's treating this as 100%, and whatever percentage I put in for the transition is a percentage of that. So currently, it's transitioning over 100% of the area. If I change this to 50%, it transitions in 50% of the time, and then it's just sitting at step one for the rest of the time. This makes sense when you think of it as the transition being the percentage of the current step, and the width as affecting the duration of the total phaser that it is going to affect. Now, if we go into phaser overall and we change the measure, the measure is going to overwrite the individual width settings and either stretch or compress this into the actual number of measures that we have told it to use. So if I tell it to use two measures, we don't lose our measurements here, they just get squeezed down into two measures. So it's the same percentage of the overall phaser it's just divided up into two measures. If we change this to six, then we can see six different pieces, but again, the percentages are maintained. The reason why measure is important is because whatever speed you have set is divided by the number of measures. So if you have this set to the default two and your speed is 60 BPM, 60 divided by two is 30, so it will run through this phaser 30 times in a minute. But if you change this to 6, then all of a sudden, your 60 BPM is divided by 6, which means that this will only go through this phaser 10 times per minute. So far, I've been working with a selection essentially functioning as one fixture. They are all running the phaser at the same time. Now, if I apply a phase of 0 through 360, all of my fixtures are doing this one at a time, which means the total duration of the phaser is kind of divided by this number of fixtures. So... This is particularly important if you're doing pops, but basically each individual fixture is hitting each step in the phaser only 10 times per minute. But because we have 12 fixtures, we're seeing a fixture hit each space in the phaser 10 times 12 per minute. Let's say you want to have one light hitting the high point of your phaser each time a drum beat is hit. To do this, you would want to set your measure to the number of fixtures you have divided by the number of times per measure you want it to hit. Since I have 12 fixtures, if I set this measure to 12, I will have one light hitting the top step each second because it's 60 BPM divided by 12, but I have 12 fixtures, so then it's multiplied by 12, which cancels out, and now I have one light hitting on each second. So if I want twice that, then I could set this to half, and it would go twice as fast. Or if I wanted a fourth, I could set it to a fourth of 12 and it would hit four times per second. Of course, as a general rule, the exact speed is more important when you're working with pops, but this applies the same to any type of form. I hope I did a fairly good job of making the math side of calculating speed for phasers in MA3 make sense. If I missed something or you would like me to make a video about another aspect of phasers, let me know in the comments and I would be happy to share what I know. I hope you have a fantastic week and happy programming. See you in the next one.